Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here, and I decided to do a Blu-ray review since I just picked it up um, last night after searching high and low at all these several locations such as Best Buy, Target, Walmart, and even Fry's Electronics to see if they carry the title. None of them have. So I had to spend 55 minutes just to get to a local Best Buy to see if they carried it and what a surprise I was so happy to see they finally found it and now I finally have it in the palm of my hands it's the horror cult classic that's done by horror legend Stephen King who not only wrote the screenplay that's based on the short story Trucks but this was the only film that he ever directed and that is, you guessed it, Maximum Overdrive, Maximum Terror, Maximum Carnage, Maximum King. <laughs> yeah. I did review this movie back in 2014 when I had an old DVD copy from back in the day and it was the best it can ever looked, sadly, because the transfer was in olive orange tint. I mean, it was pretty bright with luscious colors, but it didn't look exactly like how the movie looked when it was released in theaters, yet alone on video, but then again, it didn't look any better. <laughs> but now, we finally got a digitally remastered high-definition transfer that was taken directly from a mid-2000s uh, master. Yeah, you could tell by watching the the Studio Canal logo from 2003, yeah, the ones with the clouds uh, at the beginning, uh, just after the, the Lionsgate logo from 2013. And then after that, the DG De Laurentiis Entertainment Group logo to, yeah, to appear. Um, so I'm happy to see that um, Bestron and Lionsgate have finally joined forces to put this movie in its release with tons of special features to go with it in North America because um, over the course of several years this had been released overseas it was only available on Blu-ray overseas such as Italy, uh, the UK, Germany but not North America and I remember posting that up on Facebook too uh, in 2016 for its 30th anniversary just using the original movie poster of Stephen King just holding the <laughs> uh, a control puppet so you see Emil Estevez, Laura Harrington and the rest of the trucks yeah, the big rigs yeah, including the the big rig with the green goblin head yeah, the villain from Spider-Man <laughs> to show up I'm happy to see that we now finally got a Blu-ray it deserves. I mean, I know this movie got a lot of hate from critics, well, some of the critics out there, and, and then there are people who don't like this film at all, and they thought this movie was stupid, idiotic, dumb, I mean, totally ridiculous, but not me. I've been a solid fan of this movie ever since I was a kid when I saw this on home video as a kid. I remember being terrified by big rigs. I know it's embarrassing, but I don't care. <laughs> I was terrified by them. So it really spoke to me about this. I mean, think about it. You know, if you had to wind up being in a car and then suddenly a big rig shows up and, and it just won't move. I mean, you're afraid that you're going to end up being crashed or crushed by them and wants up getting into an accident, so think about it. I mean, I mean, basically the whole story is simple. A rogue comet that has all these greenish uh, flares uh, that's going passing through Earth and suddenly it controls all the machinery, such as big rigs and electronics around, just to turn against them and that alone makes the movie scary but it's also a fun popcorn flick I mean it has a lot of action 
mean, they had a lot of um, a lot of guns and rocket launchers, and they shoot all these uh, trucks around uh, just to just to escape and. <laughs> Not to mention a lot of graphic violence with tons of blood and gore. That's interesting enough. They almost got away with. Well, they were going to give us a an unrated cut, but sadly, that's nowhere to be found. Yeah, it's a shame. They thought Stephen King had it, but no such luck, because he claimed that the studio might have uh, taken it out of his possession. So. Yeah, it's such a shame. So I guess part of that was a rumor. Uh, I know, I mean, it's, it's sad too, because I would have loved to see what the, the cut would have been like. I know they said that they had it on VHS, but that never happened. It was just a rumor. Yeah, I don't know how did that came along, but it's such a shame. But what can you do? <laughs> But I thought the cast was great. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's it's fine. I mean, Emil Estevez did a great job, in, in my opinion. It's just too bad uh, he wouldn't appreciate to do the interview because he doesn't like the movie. So I, I understand. But it was great that they got Laurie Harrington and, and amazing enough, Yarley Smith and even John Short uh, participated in it. For the special features. But they also got Marfa Schumacher, at, or at this rate, Marfa De Laurentiis, because after all, he was the wife of, of legendary Italian filmmaker Dino De Laurentiis. No longer with us. But um, it's very nice to see that we finally got this movie we were waiting for. I love the slipcover that we got. You know, with the Green Goblin head that's coming from a Happy Toys uh, truck and you see a, a bunch of uh, truck stop uh, owners you know who came in just so they could pump up some diesel so that way all the trucks can keep on moving yeah, you can see the keys all this crushing the <laughs> pavement uh, you can even see the gas world uh, awning, the Dixie Boy truck stop, uh, the scene where the truck was about to uh, knock over the, the newlyweds car, yeah, Connie and Curtis, yeah, and then you can see the back right here, you yeah, know, we see Emil Estevez, Laura Harrington, him, and, and then you can see the Green Goblin around, has all the features included. And yes, it even says featuring music by ACDC. So you can't go wrong with that. Uh, yeah. Take out that shiny uh, slipcover. You get the same cover art as before. Yeah, you've got the spine. <laughs> Just like this. <laughs> Comes in an eagle box case. But it has uh, the artwork. Exactly as copied from the original post. So I'm really happy to see that we finally got the release we deserve. Um, so now I'm just going to get right to it with the Blu-ray review. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm taking so long, but I'm just very excited to get into it. Um, we're going to start with um, the transfer of the movie. Uh, as I said earlier but I just went ahead with it. It's a solid presentation. It looks even better than ever. It looks exactly how it came out in theaters. They got the colors right. Uh, it is shot on film exactly how it's supposed to look, so it's, don't expect it to look more like today's movies, because they're not. So um, I appreciate what Bestron, Studio Canal, and, and Lionsgate had to offer. So they did a good job you know, restoring the original colors the way the movie was meant to look. That all this annoying brownish uh, feel to it. It does have a bit of halos and minor print damage, but nothing too intimidating. So it's the best this movie had ever looked. So I'm happy for that. 
the audio sounds even better and it has both 5.1 and 2.0 of DTS uh, HD uh, master audio so it sounds totally rocking I mean you get to hear the ACDC score and all the songs included like Hell's Bells, Who Made Who, Shook Me All Night Long and so on <laughs> and also that uh, the chuggling the psycho score that they created you know it just sounds just perfect I mean every time you see those kills <laughs> uh, I love that uh, we got two commentary tracks uh, we got one is uh, with Tony uh, Mistral, who's the author of Hollywood Stephen King uh, book, with Michael Fletcher uh, joining in. Which, yeah, it's pretty boring, I'm going to be honest. It's not the best set of all the commentaries that we've seen. I was expecting something more informative on the, the legendary horror master. Stephen King with all of his novels turned into movies and TV miniseries but all they say all they're doing is just they're both bickering with each other and they're just saying what they had to say you know they didn't like the movie yeah you know, I knew they were gonna trash it of course uh, they didn't even care about other works like um, such as uh, uh, the graveyard shift come to mind. Um, they did like uh, sleepwalkers. I didn't mind sleepwalkers because I thought that was a guilty pleasure in my opinion. But I definitely enjoyed Maximum Overdrive even more. And they also mentioned it and all of that. Uh, nothing special. They could have done a whole lot better than that. Uh, the second audio commentary, which I know we were on a high off the fence on this one because well for one thing they got Jonah Ray the comedian for Mystery Science Theater 3000 and I love that show but this is the new one that we got so now we know that they're gonna try to tear it apart along with Blumhouse film executive Ryan Turek but it turns out that they're just having fun with it and they really love this movie a lot that I really appreciate it. In fact, that might be the best commentary we ever got, sadly. So they're just going around riffing it, but I know, I know, they kind of went a bit ahead of themselves, but I'm just happy that that they didn't hate the movie, so they loved it. You know, it's cool. Uh, they got Truck Stop Tales, which features Martha De Laurentiis, Marfa Schumacher, who just, you know, talks about the movie, you know, about what she experienced, uh, how she was with uh, her then husband, who's no longer with us, Dino, and how they all came together to uh, start the company, especially when they were working on, on only three uh, Stephen King adaptations, such as Firestarter, Cat's Eye, and even the um, Silver Bullet. So that's when they started to work on their next project and until this time Stephen King decided to write and direct it himself. And makes a cameo appearance too as the ATM man. <laughs> and the machine just calls him an asshole. Of course. Um, it was alright. Um, it's what we expected from Marfa but I'm glad she had a, a nice interview to, to tell about it. And no, he didn't trust the movie at all. She, she appreciated it. Uh, the only uh, concern I had with her was that she said that... And I know I'm getting sick and tired of people saying this. They had to go around saying that if they make this movie today, yeah, if they had to remake this film, they're going to end up using today's CGI with green screen effects. And that's exactly why I'm getting tired of hearing that. Okay, I wish people could just stick to the past and not go straight to the future, as we know it, because this is the downside of the future that we don't want to deal with. 
I'm just glad that they used practical effects for the film the way it was meant to be. So, I mean, this is something we don't want to deal with right now. I mean, I know, I know. I had to mention all this, too, in my videos, but I don't want to be getting into it, that argument. Uh, Rage Against the Machines, not the band, <laughs> of course, just the name of the, the featurette. It's an interview with actress Laura Harrington, and it's great to see her again. After all these years, I mean, now we know how what she really looks like uh, compared to what she looked like in the movie. So she has gotten older, and she enjoyed the film. Uh, she definitely explained that uh, even while shooting the movie or just taking a break, uh, we also learned that uh, she was with Emilio Estevez. And we also found out that, yes, Emilio is best friends with Tom Cruise. So they actually went out together to go boogie boarding. <laughs> it's interesting to see that. So I guess they were having fun together. And we also learned that um, in one of the interviews uh, that um, Emilio had brought in uh, her damn girlfriend, uh, Demi Moore. Because they just did a movie called St. Elmo's Fire. So they wound up, um, you know, hanging around on set. So they actually try to see what it looks like, you know, while they're shooting the movie. So it's really interesting that Tom Cruise and Demi Moore came by. <laughs> yeah, that would have been really interesting. <laughs> Honeymoon Horrors. Um, this is another interesting uh, featurette with John Short and Charlie Smith. Uh, John Short definitely was pleased with it. I mean, the fact that, yes, we learned that uh, he, he took uh, a different class uh, for acting. So it was like a different drama school. Uh, but he explained that uh, he did enjoy working on it, and then uh, he... Uh, he never saw it on home video until later on, uh, so he, he looked back at it and he thought, uh, yeah, he was pleased. But I gotta say, I, I was amazed uh, by John Short's uh, interview, so he, he really looked like he he had fun with it. Yarley Smith, on the other hand, yeah, she she just explains more about about her character and and all this other stuff and I know she's even mentioning about uh, the yacht like it why the yacht isn't stopping or controlling but of course saying it's that it's not mortarist or something yeah I'm sorry I had to disagree but I think that's the whole point of the film was that yes cars and and boats uh, couldn't control <laughs> but sometimes yes uh, there are um, other machinery that can so like like a plane or, or a bus or so others to choose from but <laughs> uh, well anyway um, but yeah she even remembers uh, that a fan out there just came over and said uh, to Yarly that she went to a supermarket and and just hugs her and then she wanted to tell her to say the line from the movie you know Curtis are you dead <laughs> so yeah um but it was alright um could have been better uh the kid and Kane's court uh which is um Halter Graham they showed like a brief uh, archival uh, interview with him when he was a kid and then they go back to uh, when he's now an adult. Yeah, flash forward. Uh, he totally explains the movie in full detail here, saying that uh, even before he got the role, uh, he was actually signed up to do uh, Stand By Me, actually take over for uh, both uh, Will Wheaton at first, or and then after it was going to be uh, River Phoenix, but instead. Uh, he got dropped out of the role, so now they both took over. So they, they're trying to figure it out. Uh, and then uh, he was going to be 
he was known for being in the role of a uh, Sissy Spacek film called Marie, um, which I think Dino De Laurent just produced that uh, from MGM. Uh, so that alone would often have him to uh, play the role of Deke in the movie Maximum Overdrive. Right here. Um, so that was a nice uh, interview, and he also said that it's a fun popcorn flick, so he really enjoyed it. Yeah, fun popcorn movie. So he loved it. Um, I was very appreciated by him to say that. So, Maximum Carnage. This is where they focus on the special makeup effects. Uh, Dean Gates, who did all the effects for this movie, they created all these gory scenes and and violence, all graphic. Uh, it's so amazing. He even talks about that, yes, the steamroller scene. That, yes, he actually did it twice. You know, one time, which is actually for the theatrical cut, and then another cut for the so called unrated cuts, which, of course, we won't be able to see. But they did show some photos of that, of all these shots. I mean, we get to see, like, some very gruesome uh, photo shots of the characters, like we see the coach with all that blood started to squirt out uh, from, from that's gushing straight to his uh, his noggin <laughs> right here on the skull that he got hit from the the soda can that shoot out uh, to the vending machine from an air gun, <laughs> and it actually. Uh, it gapes and pops out, and that's where the blood starts to shoot. Yeah, and that was a very gory scene. And they even show a shot of the the Bible salesman who actually had some skin layer gouging that flipped all the way down to his skull. So I was like, whoa! Even though he was filled with mud and everything, I couldn't believe I actually saw that. It was very. <laughs> Very uh, gross, but I love that. Uh, the Wilmington Factor, 30-minute uh, featurette, which it focuses on the the crew who worked on the movie. Uh, they even appeared in the film as well, uh, such as the drawbitch scene, you know, where one guy uh, was on the truck and he was about to pull over but yes the the tires fell out and he fell all the way down into the river yeah just after the motorcycle guy uh, yeah and he was terrified of heights too so that was interesting uh, then we also learned that yes Ellen is um, not only uh, one of the crew members but she wants up uh, acting as the waitress in the movie. Yeah, the one who screams, We made you! You can't do that to us! We made you! I know. Yeah, which... <laughs> but you kind of feel sorry for her because, you know, after all, she did got cut by a battery powered electric knife. So, she just couldn't stand it. Oh, but it was really nice, too, because they, they we did learn that, yes, they don't have all the taxes uh, in the future. Uh, they, sh they had worked together at the North Carolina Film Corporation. That's where Dino De Laurentiis took over the studio, and, and they had to rebuild all these warehouses around yeah, before it wants to becoming... Uh, DG, De Laurentiis Entertainment Group, and then all the way until their bankruptcy problems emerged here, and then that's when uh, Carico had took over, and they started doing all these other films. Yeah. Until um, UE Screen Gem Studios took over. Yes, Screen Gems, which, which is part of Sony, but this is a different one. But that's where they did all these other TV shows and movies. Uh, they also work on The Crow as well. And Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, yeah, the original. 
1990. Uh, they were also planning on working on Total Recall, the original Total Recall, with uh, Patrick Swayze, but then that fell through and into place. Uh, he, he dropped out and he was replaced by Arnold Schwarzenegger, and that's how it began. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I heard. Uh, so it was cool. I mean, we get to hear some info about that, and we even saw one of the members uh, right next to the Green Goblin head that's been smashed. So I think that was another piece that's in the uh, the, the burial grounds uh, of North Carolina. We also begin to see how beautiful Wilmington, North Carolina looks, and then we get to see some flashback shots of what it looks like then compared to what they look like now, so everything has changed. So some of them seem intact, but it's all there, so there you go. The only thing that's not there anymore is the gas station with, with the truck stop, so they did some changes. Who made who? Which, that could have been a lot better too. It's just, um, they're just explaining about the song by ACDC and how it became a hit or how some of the others weren't doing so well but they're, they're doing this hard to become more successful and they did. Yeah, nothing special really, but ACDC deserved better than that. And finally, Goblin Resurrectus. The best one out of all the extras that I've seen on the set. By Tim Shockey, who's part of the Goblin Project. And I'm actually best friends with him on Facebook. Because, after all, I did post it the, uh, <laughs> the Blu-ray cover art of the original poster. Hoping that this movie will finally get a Blu-ray release in North America to celebrate its 30th anniversary. But sadly, we didn't get one <laughs> until now. <laughs> so I'm really happy. Uh, I gotta say, man. This was... Uh, I was so amazed and impressed by this featurette where he had to take his guts in effort to find the, the original piece of the Green Goblin head grill because we learned that uh, Tim actually works at a local video store in North Carolina so that's really cool because he does sell a lot of movies on VHS to rent and or to buy. <laughs> yeah. And of course DVDs and Blu-rays to join in if that if that actually happened. But yeah, I think they started selling DVDs too. So he loves it so much that he wanted to have this um, at his video store. But since that prop got destroyed, uh, they were lucky to find the the original piece of the Green Goblin's head and he kept it ever since but he was trying to find a way to restore it back to its place so just to keep the spirit alive and I love that too because he looked back at the movie he watched this on a DVD um, and put this on a computer just using some bits and pieces of what the Green Goblin's head looks like just so he can put it together he took a lot of effort to restore it the way it was meant to be yeah, I, I accidentally said replica <laughs> in my response uh, when I s respond to uh, Tim about that, since he really appreciates uh, what I saw in the featurette. Uh, so that was my mistake. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I know I make mistakes too. Nobody's perfect. Uh, but anyway, I also enjoy the all the convention scenes um, yeah because he did take out all the Green Goblin head at all these conventions around so everyone could see and have him take pictures of him for only 10 bucks so that was worth it uh, but the best moment of all was when Gina Cardo Esposito who played the video game man in the movie you know, the actor from Breaking Bad uh, the short-lived series Bakersfield PD and Law and Order. He was also in the Usual Suspects too, and just recently the Jungle Book. Yeah. Uh, he came by, 
got a picture taken with Tim, and on top of that, he sent an autograph with him on the side of the Green Goblin's head grill. So that was really delightful. So that was pure delightful and very sweet of him to send him that. So I love that. That was a f amazing moment right there. And I was very impressed. I'm very happy for Tim because he's a cool guy. Uh, it would be really cool to meet him too. <laughs> yeah, if he came to uh, Monster Palooza and, and if I had enough money to do so, to to go in, then yes. But but again, I'm I'm not rich. It's hard for me as it is. So. I, at least it took me some time to get some titles that I really want to have. Um, but hey, I, I'm just happy that I got to see it. Um, and now we get to the end of all the features. Uh, we got the behind the scene footage. Eight minutes of where it left off. It was just the, the shots of the ending of the movie. You know, where you see the, the cast and crew. Mostly the crew. Including the Stephen King on the director's chair. You also see the DP you know, on the camera just trying to get into those wonderful shots. Plus they added all the stunt work that they put in. They actually shot the scene where they had all the awnings that's being destroyed. Where all the trucks are about to pass by. Go straight into the building. Crash into it and... and completely destroy the whole entire set filled with explosions even had a mushroom cloud showing up and it was very loud too and you can even see you know that one um, cameraman on on top you know trying to get that particular shot and then you see all these background shots where you see the game all with their guns and with ammo and, and rocket launchers you know trying to escape just so they can shoot out all these trucks around passing by. It's just amazing to see that. Something I never thought I would see on the Blu-ray. Because I never spotted any of that on YouTube or anything. We get a still gallery of all the photos, including all the deleted scenes on there. Uh, which Most of which are might have been ported from the Anchor Bay DVD. Uh, but it's great to see that. It even has all the movie posters from overseas all the way to here. So it's nice to see that. We got a theatrical trailer, exactly what you spotted on YouTube or any other place, and DVDs, where you see Stephen King doing his introduction before we get to the scenes of the movies, even some a few deleted scenes on the trailer. Yeah, but nevertheless. And then you hear the announcer saying, Maximum Terror, Maximum King. Dino De Laurentiis presents Stephen King's Maximum Overdrive. Yeah. And I believe that's the same announcer who also did other um, horror movies or any other for TV spots and trailers. So I'm beginning to, I'm trying to recognize who that guy was. So. But it's got to be a black guy. Um, they also played in the the Halloween free season of the witch theme in place which makes it work even though they they weren't ready to use the ACDC music uh, but I love that too because even Halloween free never gets any respect it deserves but I love that score that was done by John Carpenter uh, the TV spots uh, exactly what you saw on YouTube and that's all taken from all these old VHS recording but the quality isn't exactly as good as I expected. I was hoping it was going to be high quality uh, data masters of the, the two TV spots. Um, it's the best that they could ever do. Um, but it was nice to see that. Otherwise they would have wound up uh, taking it directly from YouTube and just <laughs> put it all together. Uh, with the announcer joining in. And then it even says at the end, starts Friday... July 25th, I feed us everywhere. Yeah. Uh, but hey, it was nice to see that. 
So that was it. Uh, that was the Blu-ray of Maximum Overdrive from Bestron Collector Series that's released by Lionsgate. You can pick this up. Um, I would definitely recommend picking this up if you can for a lot less. And they're probably going to go down anyway if, by any chance because they're going for higher prices. But $24.99 is the best deal so far. Or $24.96. So check it out. If you're a huge fan of this movie like I am, or you love Stephen King, or just have, you know, just watch it for a fun popcorn flick and don't bother what anyone says, or the fact that you're curious about it, then <laughs> whatever. Pick this up. It's worth it. I mean, I'll say this, though. I wish um, they had a better audio commentary. Um, in fact, you know what they could have done a whole lot better? If they added uh, the Joe Bob Briggs uh, commentary for the movie. Hell, I probably would rather have um, the TNT's Monster Vision included. Because after all, it would have made the release even better. Uh, but yes, I'd love to have the commentary to go with it. And that's what they should have done. And maybe have a better commentary to, to become more informative. And definitely uh, try to have respect for Stephen King and and all the rest of his uh, works. And don't go uh, too negative about it. Yeah, I mean, that's the problem. And on top of that, um, I think the features would have been a little bit more better if they would stop mentioning about adding a remake to this. Um, I'm sorry I had to disagree with Laura on saying that this movie deserves a remake. No, it doesn't. It doesn't need a green screen effect. It doesn't need any CGI effects or anything. Okay, I love the movie the way it is. I mean, come on, we had one already called Trucks with Timothy Busfield, and that wasn't very good at all. I mean, that was a TV movie that aired on USA Network, but I have seen it on Sci-Fi Channel back in the late 90s, and I hated it then. I still hated it now. Especially when I saw the DVD version that had some uncut scenes that didn't quite make it to the TV version. So, there you go. So, uh, I, I recommend avoiding that film and just stick to Maximum Overdrive instead. Because it's entertaining. Now, besides the, the graphic violence that this movie went for with blood and gore, as well as ACDC music that's blasting around no matter what, because I love ACDC too. And also, uh, <laughs> all the action scenes, you know, with the rocket launchers and, and machine guns all around, you know, blowing up all the trucks. It definitely had comedic moments, too. I mean, there's even moments when Curtis and Bill were all the way down into the sewer and trying to find the, the Bible salesman who's a pervert. Yeah, he was the one who touches... Uh, the young girl who's a hitcher, but she's a bit tomboyish at a way, but nevertheless, she's, she's beautiful. Um, only discovered that Deke was there just trying to find his father, and we all know how that happened at the end when he found out the reveal. Um, yeah, they went all the way down, and this is where <laughs> they talk about the a whole load of, of shit <laughs> that's inside the sewer. I mean, he actually splashed into it saying, how's the taste? Yeah, from <laughs> Curtis. Yeah, Curtis said that to Bill. And then Bill just, uh, <laughs> just tried to go straight to the other side of the corner, and then this is where they spotted uh, the mice. Yeah, and this is, yeah, because they, they both got flash lights, and they just uh, started to sell. Hey, Curtis, here's your friend. <laughs> and he just says, holy shit. Uh, then, um, uh, another funny moment was where you see the tall guy you know, who has a sense of humor, uh, where he was uh, at the game room. And he <laughs> by the time he hears some noises in the background, you know, which is a, a tiny army truck, uh, Filled with uh, with a machine gun, you know, ready to uh, 
go after uh, all the game, and they're about to be because <laughs> after all he was, he was just there to get some gas. <laughs> he just uh, pops off at the game room, crashes all the the mirrors to the door, saying, "What the fuck is going on here?" <laughs> I love that moment. Uh, of course, he got shot down yeah, by the, the truck. The yeah, tiny truck. <laughs> and I'm really proud of it as a fan. I'm not just saying that. I really meant it. Okay? I enjoyed this movie a lot. And I'm never going to change my mind. Never. Not even in a million years. And I really love it. And I'm happy. That's in my opinion. So anyway, I'm Joseph A. Sapporo, and I'll see you later. Bye.